The following are excerpts from an interview by Alex Vesely, director of Wizard of the Desert, courtesy of Noetic Films. For more information, please go to wizardofthedesertmovie.com. Thank you. I think that there were the one thing I wanted to say, which I think is so important, is that that it has to do with movement. It has to do with Erickson Sinai people. You know, we have pacing and leading with NLP and all of that. But what Erickson did was stay in absolute um, what's the word? I'm congruence with the movement of what was going on, and and also shifting from one state to another. We never know that we're doing this. If people could learn that they're in one state or in another state and know when they're in it and be able to be so clear about it that they can be conscious about what they're doing, it would be infinitely better in the whole world for people to be able to live together. I think Erickson saw shifts of movement. You know, Feldenkrais Feldenkrais did uh, something called awareness through movement. How the body, he could, people, the more you become tuned into your body, the more you can heal. Um, and <clears throat> that's not true with everything, of course, but, um, and I think Erickson was uh, very tuned into how to get his body to move again by imagining things, using imagery. And, and when he was working with people, when he was working with us, uh, he was always, um, he didn't miss anything. He was always kind of a little bit, he was with us, but there was always, there was always movement, even in the silences. Erickson was a profound observer. I think he may have learned that when he had polio and couldn't move from the neck down. And he had uh, seven or eight, seven brothers and sisters, and he spent his whole days watching people, watching the whole activity in the household. And uh, I think that he saw, I don't ever think I heard him say it, but I think that he saw that what people said and what their body said didn't always match. And he always went for the body. And I think that he was able to see people or see in people their relationship to their bodies on an unconscious level. And very often in the work with them, he would reframe what he saw in this relationship that they had unconsciously with their bodies. Uh, an example is um, the girl with the space between her two front teeth, which she hated, which was really the reason why I got, went to Erickson in the first place, okay. that particular case. There are many, many other ways that he worked. But this was one of the things that he observed about people, that he could see how they, what they liked about themselves, what they didn't like about themselves, how they felt about their own abilities. He, could, he managed to um, tune into that in a way and then reframe it in, in, in hypnosis. But it was always a reframe that they could take with them. And so... So was that the reason why he would choose something physical because you would uh, you would sort of always have that with you? Well, I think in those cases. Now that's not you know. I mean, he didn't do that with every patient. I'm, this is just one of the hallmarks that I see over and over again in the work that he's done, that he can see something that is um, very very fundamental in the way a person feels about him or herself. And he, t he handles that so gently, very often with humor, very often with um, telling the truth always, but in a way that the person can walk away holding something that's totally different in terms of the way they feel about that, which then generalizes to the way they feel about themselves. Whatever he said to me wove itself into my life and into my choices somehow when I didn't even realize it until later. 